1989, the community charge, commonly known as the poll tax, was introduced by Margaret Thatcher's government. This was a flat rate local government tax on every individual, so a cleaner living in one bedroom flat would pay the same as a lord living in a stately home. Tony Woodley helped create Tottenham against the poll tax, and here he describes how his local community, like so many others across the country, refused to pay the charge, battled the authorities, and by 1993 had defeated this hated policy. We got window posters up saying I'm not paying my poll tax, which was amazing. You'd go around Haringey and there'd be three or four posters in, in windows in one street with people saying I'm not paying my poll tax. We'd get people to sign a pledge saying they're not paying and we didn't do anything with that pledge. It was just as a way of, one, getting to talk to people and two, getting those people to see that a lot of other people were pledging that they weren't going to pay it and not... I think there's that thing about feeling isolated as well. If you know there's a lot of other people doing something, you don't feel as isolated and you feel more confident that you can do stuff. You know, there would be stunts that happened, there would be small demonstrations. And then in the ward group that I was in, you know, it was how we get everyone in that ward to know about the poll tax and feel confident that there's people and just going and knocking on people's doors. Um, and I think on that ward level and street level way, you can easier knock on people's doors because it's your neighbours. And in a way, meetings are happening when you're walking up and down the streets. Um, and people had sort of phone tree networks on their street and people had ways of if the bailiffs come, people would be out on the street wondering what was going on. And at first we were saying to people, go to the courts and clog up the courts. And in Haringey, they were taking 500 cases a day. So after a while, we sort of realised that the people that were going to court were the ones that the council realised were there, and they were the people that they were going after with liability orders and bailiffs. The 400 people that hadn't turned up, the council didn't know if they still lived there, if they were just not bothering turning up. So they were harder to know about. So they, they sort of targeted the people that had turned up. So fairly soon into the sort of clogging up the courts campaign, in Haringey anyway, we started doing leaflets and newsletters and posters just saying, don't turn up. If you don't turn up, they won't know if you're there. Which meant that they were taking 500, 600 cases a day and getting liability orders against people. But then they had to enforce those liability orders and that was where bailiffs came in and we started doing, there was loads of posters that we did about just ignore the bailiffs. You know, we, we looked into the legal, legal situation and knew that bailiffs couldn't do anything other than turn up at your door and you had to let them in for them to be able to come in and take your possessions. So we would just say to people, don't open your door. And that worked far better than clogging up the courts because they had hundreds, probably thousands and thousands of liability orders against people not paying in Haringey and the rest of the country. But they couldn't, they still could not get that money because people were saying, yeah, I've been to court. Yes, you've got a liability order. Oh, I haven't been to court. You've got a liability order against me. The court said I've got to pay. I'm still not paying. If people heard a bailiff was coming, people would bang dustbin lids on the floor. We tried it with whistles in our street. But there was definitely cases where if a bailiff was getting angry on a doorstep, if someone had opened the door, neighbours would go down that, you know, go down someone's garden path and start having a go at bailiffs. And that happened quite a lot in Haringey. So it was incredibly difficult for whatever ways they had of trying to collect it. People were just refusing to do it. People would be scared of the courts. People are scared of bailiffs because the system threatens us with those. But so many people went through it that people just lost that fear. People didn't, people didn't worry that they were getting a court summons. People didn't worry that a bailiff was knocking on the door because they knew it was happening to thousands and millions of other people. Groups all around the country were doing similar things. And, you know, I talk about cities, but it was little villages and, you know, I know it's a derogatory term, but that whole blue rinse brigade of middle class women in suburbia had as much effect with their poll tax groups as we probably did in London as well. So it was just huge amounts of different people and people, you know, 
we didn't have email in those days so people were just phoning each other or visiting each other or we all sent each other each other our leaflets and posters so that people could pinch things from each other's groups and see where they were going before the main demonstration in Trafalgar Square, which left from Kennington, I was one of the people arguing that we shouldn't put too much time in it, into it because we should be organising locally. And in the end, we decided that we would put time into it and we would take, as, you know, advertise it as, as well as we could and get as many people going down there. And I, I accept I was wrong, you know, because for all we were doing locally, to go, to get off at Kennington Tube and just see hundreds of thousands of people there together from all different parts of the country from people who were you know more libertarian and direct action to people who just wanted to write petitions and lobby their councillors everyone was there so for me that part of the demonstration was more important than the riot with or without the riot I think people would have carried on doing what they were doing because they'd see you know just seeing that number of people together and realizing other people were doing it gave a lot of us you know inspiration to carry on the riot was just I suppose you could call it like icing on the top of the cake it probably scared the authorities but I think the level of non-payment was probably scaring the government more they can deal with riots X million people refusing to pay a debt and causing councils incredible problems and Tory councils as well as Labour councils, I think that causes more of a threat than a few people chucking a few bottles. Although I'm not putting down a few people chucking a few bottles. <laughs>